Thanksgiving will be here soon. What we have to be thankful for, the legislature being in town. Okay, I'm just kidding. The, the, the special session is happening this week. Jason, tell us why. We've talked about that uh, on this show a number of times, but we're going to be in special session this week, and the whole purpose of it, uh, and the only purpose of it, is to deal with redistricting. Um, because of COVID, uh, and we had the census this last year, we always have to do uh, redistricting after a census uh, takes place every 10 years to make sure they redraw the lines, uh, both for state house districts, state senate districts, for congressional districts. That's what's going to happen this next week. Um, the governor uh, outlined that, has not added anything else to this special session so it's only going to be about redistricting uh, and it should be in and out week mr leader what are we about to see well we're going to come in i think we're going to be in in a week it's going to take five days constitutionally that's the fastest we can pass a bill we're doing this special session because for the as i've said on the show the the latest in the united states history they issued the uh, census data it, the part that's interesting for me is floor leader, for the first time that anyone can remember since they were building the Capitol, the chamber's under construction, so we're actually gonna have, we've created a mini chamber on the first floor that I'm a little nervous about, but I think it's all gonna go well. Staff's done a phenomenal job, and we're gonna pass a great map. There's some partisan Democrats that are hardcore harping on this map, but that's about it. I see this going through, maybe some theatrics, but we'll get the people's business done quick. Speaking of theatrics, the. Democrats got out of each other's way to pass the infrastructure. We've been joking about that for months and months and months. Uh, by the way, the word in, uh, inflation is coming. Anyway, in this, this next question is infra infrastructure passes. When's that money going to be here? What do we see? Well, you can't talk about government spending without talking about inflation. We just have the largest inflation number, <laughs> over 6% since the 1990s. I've been talking about it on the show for five months when I've had people telling me, no, it's too soon, it's too soon. It's not too soon, and it's ridiculous that they're debating that, that President Biden said that this won't add to the inflation of the country. Of course it will. This is a crisis we need to pay attention to. Uh, now, they got out of the way. They passed the infrastructure bill. There'll be about a billion dollars coming to the state of Oklahoma. We're going to find a way to spend it on jobs and roads as best we can but this has got to stop we can't continue we are we are staring down the barrel of 1970s style inflation if we don't stop constantly printing money it's hurting real people worse than 30 years so far some of that money is going to deal with broadband which is speaker mccall's in the house is that's a big thing for them your thoughts about this infrastructure money coming to oklahoma yeah, look, this was a big win for the Biden administration. This was a key part of what uh, President Biden ran on. And I think if all the viewers at home will remember, uh, former President Trump also wanted a big infrastructure package. Uh, the fact is, is the United States has fallen behind a lot of other first world countries when it comes to our infrastructure, our roads, bridges, broadband, access to internet, these types of things. This is what this is going to be spent on. It's not a lot of the extras, uh, a lot of the social stuff that's been talked about. This is nuts and bolts of what our government's for and it's going to get spent in the state of Oklahoma and I think it's a great thing. Now our next half hour we're going to talk good news and bad news. Be right back. Welcome back to part two. Now Oklahoma State Supreme Court tossed out the opioid settlement, the J&J &J settlement. If you're confused at home what this all means, I am too. Let's turn to our uh, leader and lawyer, John Eccles, to explain what is going on with this. What's next? Well, to explain what happened in the opioid uh, turning over the settlement, uh, the state attorney general, Mike Hunter, sued the opioid manufacturers under what's called a public nuisance doctrine, saying you knew this was addictive, but you put it out as a public nuisance anyway. Uh, the Oklahoma Supreme Court, and frankly, probably correctly, said that's an expansion of the public nuisance doctrine. If it's a legal product, you can't expand it that way. Here's what the viewers at home need to know. The legislature was wise in their fiscal spending. We did not spend any of that money. And because of strong conservative policies, we're at a 16% increase in revenue collections. Well, I'm disappointed we're not gonna get that to treat our opioid crisis, we are still in a strong fiscally sound position because of the decisions we're making in the legislature. Three things. Number one, Mike, Mike Hunter is not the attorney general anymore. The verdict is out. It's been thrown out. And number three, we still have an opioid problem. Yeah, we absolutely do. And I think when people look uh, at the paper or they see the headline on this, they're going to see the big number, $465 million or so uh, in the Johnson & Johnson case. And they'll think, wow, we missed out on all that money. I think that it's important um, that the case uh, was overturned in this way, and, and I think that Leader Eccles explained that really well. 
What's most important is we still have a big opioid crisis in the state of Oklahoma that plagues our citizens, and we need to continue to work on our public health in the state so that our citizens can get healthy and get off of addiction. Addiction is breaking up families and causing lots of problems in our communities, and no matter what the court said, we need to focus on uh, fixing that problem in our state. Yeah, the media's forgotten about this thing. It's still going on, and it's a really, really sad thing. All right, here's the good news that we teased up just a minute ago. You're involved with this. This is a village that's going to be built for homeless veterans, some of whom are dealing with mental health issues, substance abuse issues. Tell us all about what's about to happen. Yeah, absolutely. We're super excited this week, uh, uh, Veterans Day, that we were able to announce the expansion of Veterans Community Project uh, here in the state of Oklahoma. It'll be in Oklahoma City. It'll be uh, a village of tiny homes that is transitional housing uh, for veterans that are on the street. We say all the time um, when we're talking about our veterans that uh, we appreciate your service or thank you for your service, but this takes that a step further. It's instead of just uh, telling a veteran thank you for their service, it's putting our money where our mouth is. It's creating the type of village with wraparound services that will help our veterans here uh, in the city of Oklahoma City as well as the state. Um, it, it will, it'll save lives in the state of Oklahoma. I'm super excited to be a part of it. This is a great deal. I couldn't be more proud of, proud of my friend and uh, Jason Dunnington and the, what he's doing with the vet village. And I couldn't be more proud. Nick Collison's involved in this, as you saw, that what they're going to try to do for our homeless veteran population. It's just a great day to be an Oklahoman. It's a great day to see what can happen when we all work together and realize these men and these women, they sacrificed for us. And when they come home, having to re-pick up their lives from, from all of the loss that has been suffered, it, it's just incredible. It makes me proud. These are the stories. We have a political show where sometimes we go back and forth, sometimes we fight, but there are times we wrap arms together and say, let's, make, let's agree on what we can agree on to make Oklahoma better. You're doing that, Jason. I'm really proud of you. Good job, man. See this again at news9.com slash your vote counts and follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks.